Welcome to the Ultimate Champions podcast brought to you by Unagi. I am absolutely buzzing for this and I'm even more buzzing that I've been joined by my pal Steve Sidwell and Jay Boffroyd. How are we boys? All good, good mate, you? Good. Can't complain, mate. Barney's looking good, mate. Do you know, Sir Quiff Richard is absolutely it's it's on, it's on flames, isn't it? It's looking good, mate. mate well, well worth it. Smashing the media career. Must yeah, mate, it. yeah, been busy, been busy. So, uh, yeah, so going well. If I'm honest, I'm finding it hard at the moment, like that transition from football. I know it's been three years now, whereas the first couple of years it's all new. Whereas now, now I'm watching a lot of football as well. I'm, I'm, you get into them sort of days where you're like, I miss it, but you're going to miss it every day. But work's there, it's ticking over, so. Great. Happy days, Jay. Yeah. Uh, back from Japan, back in England. How have you settled in? Yeah, like Sidi said, you know, for me, I've just finished. So, you know, I wake up in the mornings, obviously taking my kids to school is, you know, it's fine. But then afterwards, like I get home and I'm like, so what should I do now? And, you know, obviously I'm just getting started in the work. So, you know, that's ticking over much slower than you. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but you, you know, played how long? I can't believe how long you played. Yeah, till. 23 years. 23 That's years. That's incredible career. So, so 39, you retired 39? Yeah. Nice. But I've been, I've been very fortunate. But I never had no injuries, operations or anything like that. So that's why I think I was able to play so long. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's good to start, you know, living life now. You know, I lived the dream, but now I've started living life, so. Absolutely, you know. and you've still got it. Because you yeah. came on Soccer M a few weeks, yeah. a few weeks wow. back. Double top bin. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bins roid. Not I said, I, I said well, mate, they got to change well. the... Sh- that, was it J-A-R? Yeah, just call it they J. J, isn't it? Just call it J. J. J-A-R. I think they got to do that. Until someone tops it. Yeah. And they got... You and Bridgie, that's the best I've seen there. Your one was just... What was Bridgie though? How much did Bridgie raise? Bridgie just like flicked it up. Yeah, but how much did he raise though? Oh, did you raise a lot of money? Yeah, a yeah. thousand. Lots of money for a thousand, yeah, mate. Yeah. We went to four figures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But right, boys, we're here today because Yanagi have got a new yes. fantasy football game out called yep. The Ultimate Champions. Mm. Now, I was going to go into it and tell you all about it, but we've got one bigger. Go on. We've got the big dog. We've Ooh. got the CEO of Yanagi. Love that. Yeah. Yes. It's, it's, it. it's, it's this it. man. <laughs> Remy Perrin, everyone. Right, Remy, Remy, big dog. Great to meet you, mate. Um, Thanks for having me. Excited about this new game. Uh, tell us about it. So it's uh, it's a new kind of fancy game, in which every football player is represented in the game by cards, which are NFTs. Mm. And so, as a user, you assemble your squad, you manage a squad, and then you play with the cards, you collect those player cards, and you play with them in the fancy game. What is an NFT? So, what's an NFT? Great question. First of all, non-fungible tokens. So if I asked you to pick one of these two five pound notes, which one would you choose? This one. No. Why though? They're the same, right? No, no. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm picking this one. Yeah, I definitely choose this one. So you have that I, I, I love yeah. that one. Cheers, thank you. Thanks for coming. Cheers, Remy. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> <laughs> 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 no, they're the same, right? They've got yeah, the same yeah, value. Exactly. Same, yeah. same yeah. value. Now, what if I ask you to sign one of them, Steve? Can we just sign it? Yeah. I can't do that. No? Can we just sign it? Yeah, can I mean, it's just yours though, isn't it? If you sign it. He's this here. Yeah, he's <laughs> got plenty of it. <laughs> so this five pound now is yeah. worth tenfold. <laughs> that's the point, right? Now if I ask you to pick, it's much different. Yeah. There's one that's really unique. Right, okay. So they're not gotcha. fungible anymore. Right. When they're uh, fungible, they're right. interchangeable. They have the same value. Yeah. But now that one's unique because it's got your signature on it. It's not worth five pounds anymore. Right. What's it worth? Yeah. 550. So that's fungibility. That one's non fungible now. So right, now we're going to okay. argue who keeps it. Okay. And so an NFT is, is a digital asset yeah. that's got an identity on the blockchain. And that's non fungible. It's unique. You can't interchange it with anything else. Um, and it can be a certificate of ownership yeah. for a digital asset. So it could be a drawing, it could be a picture, it could be a player card. Uh, or it could be a certificate of ownership of something in the physical world as well, like a painting. Um, so, and it's because it's got that identity on the blockchain and it's immutable, it's it's really yours. When you acquire it, it's yours forever and you can do with it what you want. So with that, because Sid, Sid signed that, whose is that then? Would he get all the royalties once he sells it on? Well, it depends what you do with it. Now it's not an NFT, it's just, it's a, it's a non-fungible yeah. Yeah. Own. But if you if you put it on the on the blockchain, you make a digital, certificate of ownership of yeah. that, then yeah, it's his now, it's and then his. he can sell it on, and he can keep it on as a collectible. He can even destroy it if he wants, it's really yours forever, once you have that NFT. Yeah. What I like about NFTs, or what I've read up on it and, and seen, is that there's 
you can see all the history as well exactly yeah. it. there's, that there's yeah. no hidden so you can see who owned it where yeah. when it was traded or when it was sold absolutely whereas well, in, in the real world you don't know how it, no. how it grows in value yeah. how it yeah. you know yeah you have that value. ownership history and it's it's on the blockchain again so it's immutable and it's there forever um, and it's transparent it's, it's there's no centralized entity and the blockchain is a decentralized network so everybody has access to the same level of information and it's always updated always to the latest. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I just, it's a lot to take in for it me, but I deliberately didn't learn about yeah. it because I wanted to know like, as, a, as a fan, if you like. Mm. Um, but tell us more about the actual game, Ultimate Champions. So you get into the game, uh, you're granted a budget, <coughs> and you can pick your initial uh, squad of players. Every player's got a price based on form, based on performance. This is where your football knowledge comes in. I know football better than you, you know football better than the next guy. So you pick a great squad, and then you the, the cards that you're picking uh, are not NFTs then, they're a common card with unlimited supply. Right. Um, you can't trade them. But you play with them, you, you register your team in the game week, your guys, your football players go and play their games, they get points, mm -hmm. so they might get 10 points from scoring a goal, five points from making an assist. And then if your team uh, has enough points, you get rewards. And those rewards are actually pack of cards, digital cards, a bit like your Punini cards back in the day. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. I remember when you used to get a shiny, you like, come on! <laughs> That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. And you open I got the shiny, give me the free yeah. Yeah. for the shiny. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so you open this bag of cards, it's got new digital cards that, you're, that are not NFTs. They are NFTs this time. And they go straight into your collection. And then you have a bigger roster to choose from to pick your squad for the next game week. Uh, and the NFTs that you earn just by playing the game, they are tradable. They have an identity on the blockchain and they have value in cryptocurrency. Wow. So what is, what, 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 where can you get the players from? It's the championship and yeah. league one, right? So yeah, so we're going to, we're going There's not a game league. like that out there. There's no fantasy football That's the championship, thing. Yeah. is there? That's why we really wanted to start with the championship, focus on these teams. Uh, we know they're very popular. We love the championship and mm -hmm. there's not a, a fantasy game out there, but for the championship fans, everybody's playing fantasy Premier League. Oh. Uh, but there's definitely room in the market for, for such a so, great game. So for example, if you own championship players, yeah. right, and then that championship player gets a move to a Premier League team or goes down to a League exactly. One team, what yeah. happens then? Well, it depends whether within the game we monitor those leagues and yeah. the two you mentioned we will monitor. So if he goes to a Premier League team, yeah. you can still play with that player and the value will be probably even more because a collectible now. It's yeah. like unique. We're not going to issue new cards of that player in that particular team. So you, it's got that memorabilia good, value yeah. as well going down. So that was my, that was going to be my question similar to that is, do the values of the player or NFT go up in terms of the, their performances? They would. It's an open market, so it's supply and demand. And we expect that demand will be driven by how well the players perform, how many points they get you in the game. Right. So if you are, so if you, if you, at the beginning of the season, <coughs> you, you want to purchase an NFT of a player you love, but it's not really well known yet. Yeah. He's having a great season. All of a sudden, he's scoring all the points. Everybody wants him. Uh, you can then sell him on and make a big profit out of that. Right. Or you can just play the game, yeah. grind your way in, earn those NFTs little by little. Uh, you open that pack, maybe you get the shiny one, yeah, and you're really lucky. On the shiny. <laughs> and yeah, and so it's a new business model, playing to earn, and it's great for the players because you can basically make a living from just playing a game. Yeah. So, so to begin with, then it's like luck of the draw. No, no, you you start. You can with, actually choose, or is it, you you choose your initial players. Yeah. But they're just not NFTs. Right. But it enables you to then start earning the NFTs. Yeah. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. So, like the players, the players. Yeah. Can you, is there a is there a maximum of players from the same team that you can pick? No. No, so you can have, you can basically come up with an entire Fulham squad if you wanted to. Um, Probably would right now, as we're yeah. <laughs> absolutely flying, aren't they? Yeah, but you might want to find that little gem, uh, you know, that specific left back that you really love that, that's going to, you know, make an assist but or then, two in the next game week. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's true because if you go for a lower team, yeah, you know, and then you find the gem, then it becomes more valuable because it exactly. goes up quicker, right? Yeah. yeah. Is there a budget for the play? You know, in some fancy football games, you've got. X amount to spend. Yeah, to start with, yeah, you have a budget. Everybody's got the same budget, so oh. everybody's on the same level playing field. Yep. And it's really about your knowledge. That's the skill where it comes in. Who are you going to pick? Who's going to be your first 11? Mm. Uh, it's going to be different from uh, Steve's yeah. and from yeah. Jay's. And then you guys compete on the same level, and whoever has the most points has the better rewards. And then you start earning those NFTs, and you collect, mm. collect, collect. And you can trade the NFTs that you get as well. You might say, well, I don't really fancy this guy, or I get Mitrovic, great player. But if I sell him on, maybe I can buy two or three other players that are going yeah, to fit yeah. my team better and progression. So you have to, it's, it's, a bit, it's about being a manager yeah. at the end of the day. It sounds cool. It sounds cool. And uh, where, where and when can people play this game? So we're, we're aiming to launch in a couple of months, um, around March, April. 
and you can play it on the web, so it's online. You can play it on your laptop, you can play it on your mobile, you can take it with you so, wherever you want. So if you, like you said, you're launching in March or April, right? Yeah. So if Fulham might have won the league by then, and you get a load of their players, and they go to the Premier League, that's a good question, man. <laughs> <laughs> does, it, that reach, does it restart next season? Or? Yeah, it starts. Yeah. It restarts every season, but yeah. you can still use the cards you get this season yeah. uh, forever. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so we're going to monitor the Premier League. So the guys that you're getting this season from Fulham, let's say, yeah, uh, they, you will monitor them next season. They'll get points from wh whatever team they go to, yeah. uh, if they move team or even in the, in the Premier League. But do you get more points? For in the Premier League than you do in the Championship, no. obviously because it's no. a higher league. No, same. same. No, because we're we're thinking it's it's um, it's a level playing field again. So your Championship teams playing against Championship teams. Yeah. So it's not necessarily easier or more difficult to score a goal in the Championship than it is in the Premier League because it's similar level of opposition mm. in every league. Okay. But if Fulham have already won the league, you don't want to get their players. They'll be they'll be on the same. <laughs> 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 it's all over. They won't be turning up. But Remy, thank you so much. For that, thank mate. you guys. And best of luck with the game. Top man. Thank, thank, you. Man. thank you, Remy. Everyone, thanks, mate. Uh, right, boys, the championship. Yeah, you know a thing or two about the championship. Yeah. What is it like to play in? I loved it. I loved it. I, it is, it's a long slog. There's a lot of games. Uh, Fictionist is, is crammed it's in, tough, isn't yeah. it? It's, it's you know, the Saturday, Especially the Tuesday, Christmas. Friday, Monday. Um, but I like that. I mean, in terms of sort of rest and recovery between games, it wasn't a lot because there's not much training you can do. But you know you're on the coach one day going to Barnsley, then you you know you're playing wherever QPR next day, and then you're up and then he's back a lot of travelling, and it's just game after game. And as well, like in the Championship, it wasn't like you know you're on a bus. You know it's not like these big you know Premier League teams that get private jets everywhere. You're yeah. up and down the road on a bus. So a coach. see, you know you don't get that treatment in the prim in the uh, Championship. You don't. Get no, I'll playing. say the, the top the top the, uh, the, the top ones that have got <clears> a budget. Yeah. So when I was at Brighton, when I finished at Brighton, we were South Coast. So ultimately, we was travelling everywhere. You know, up the country. Yeah. So we, we used to fly quite a lot. So we we didn't. We just and I was at Cardiff. Yeah. You know, so it was it's far from Cardiff to anywhere really. It depends apart on from and... apart from Bristol City and you know Reading is not yeah. that far. It's easy to get to. But when you start going up to Manchester and you know it's, it's, it's difficult to to get there and back if you've got a game on the Wednesday as well or the Tuesday. Does that travel but, take it out of you though? If you you know you're doing the Tuesday Saturday. No, Tuesday, you, Saturday. you just you literally just fall into. Yeah, just, it's just a norm. repetitive, repetitive. You, you, you just become used to it. You just become used to it. The, the biggest difference, I would say, with Championship and the Premier League, I remember playing the Premier League at clubs and we would play a team on a Saturday and you, you, you would openly say, bank of three points today, we'll win this at home. No, yeah. It's a no-brainer. You would go out on that pitch knowing that you're going to wow, win. Really Whereas in the Championship, I could honestly say, whether you played, if you were top of the league and you played bottom of the league, you're like... You have to be on it. <laughs> You had to be Every on it all the time. Every single yeah. game. Because, it, because it's got so many games, like, was it 46, 46 league games? Yeah. And then you've got cup games as well. Yeah. Like, it's gruelling. But for me, as a forward, once you get on the roll as a forward scoring goals, yeah. and you're playing Saturday and Tuesday, it's just bang, 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 yeah. bang. Yeah. So for me, it was, I mean, the season I scored 20 goals, it, it was amazing. I just felt like every time I went on the pitch, I was going to score a goal because it was just always there. Uh, but the Christmas period, I think, in the championship season is the one that can really get you because there's so many fixtures and if you start picking up injuries, yeah, yeah. then it can really take toll in your squad. Mm. But uh, talking about injuries, talking about being a striker, yeah. do you get kicked more in the championship? Yes. Are the, are the, yeah, yes. 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 Yeah. And the defenders much because it's, I think it's more. F I think it's more of a physical league, you know, and I think it can be more yeah. direct. Depending on the teams you play, you know, you could play someone like, you know, Scunthorpe at the time. I remember playing against them and, you know, they wasn't, you know, technically great, but it was a difficult game because they were so direct and because they were so physical. You know, they're the kind of games, like Sidi said, you know, you can lose those games if you're not on it mm. that, on that day. So, you know, that's why I think it kind of levels itself out with, you know, with quality and with, you know, hard work. Yeah. What are the differences and similarities between the Championship and the Premier League? Well, quality-wise, <laughs> Is a step up in the Premier League. In what respect? You know, you look at the strikers, technical aspects, the way that they pass the ball around, one touch, effortlessly. It's like sometimes when you watch, for instance, a Man City team, it's like watching or playing yeah, a computer. It's crazy, yeah. Accuracy, quality, part, you know, the whole lot of ball speed, it's much quicker. Um, so individual-wise, it's an, another level up, as is collectively. But you'll also get players in the Championship 
that haven't had their break or that have performed well and just haven't got that lucky break to get in the Prem that would, their game would suit the Premier League. Yeah, yeah. Because you do get a bit more time yeah. in the Premier League than you would do in the Championship because the Championship is just... So you do get more time because loads of people say that. Yeah, from game to game. I mean, sometimes, yeah. sometimes you watch a Premier League game, it's like watching it on times 30 on your skybox. It's like, bloody hell, this is fast, <laughs> this is relentless. Bing, 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 yeah. yeah, but then you get a lot of games where, you know, it's a bit more chess related, whereas I think Championship, yeah, that's where it's just a free-for-all with all the teams because everyone's just like going at it. Yeah. Mm. So when you got promoted with Reading, yeah. and you were like your first game in the Premier League, were you just like, wow, this is completely different to what? Um, no, because when I I think when and I see it now with a lot of teams that come up for the first time when you get promoted for the first time and you play in the Premier League for the first time you're still riding that wave from being promoted Buzzing. so when we played in the Premier League we played against Borough on our first day Middlesbrough we was 2-0 down we come back and won 3-2 and then that just kind of teed us up to go again so we went into every game at Reading play, even if it was against City United Liverpool thinking we got, we, we're going to win this that was our mindset. It was not like, oh, we were at Anfield, this is brilliant, what an experience. We was like, oh, we can, we, we're going to win this. And we could get beat 2 0, but we come off going, that's all right. Do you, think that's what, do you think that's why, you know, teams that get promoted in their first season do yeah. really well? Yeah, because yeah. they're riding then, the wave. And yeah. then their second season go. Yeah, because oh. everyone calls it a second season syndrome. Yeah. 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 Because I think it's difficult. Once you, like you said, once you, once you get promoted, I mean, I, I didn't get promoted like you. I kind of, I was at Cardiff and I left and went up. But I guess that when you're, on a high of getting promotion, riding that wave, and then bringing some, you know, bits of quality in mm. again. You know, you've got that, you know, that self confidence, that team spirit, um, and I guess that it would be, you know, easier to get results than, you know, if you if you kind of just played them in a cup or something like that. But also, in that first season, you're always the underdog, so there's no pressure on you. Exactly, yeah. There's pressure, obviously, that you want to stay in the league, but all you're thinking, well, all we've got to do is get to that magic 40 points or be <laughs> have three worst teams below you. But every game you go into it, and, and if you transact, transfer that into any day or walk of life, if you play darts or golf or whatever, or, you know, and you're the underdog, you're, you're totally relaxed, aren't you, when you're playing or when you come up against these? It's, it's like, like every time I film golf life. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the underdog. That's what I mean. Yeah. When you're yeah. the underdog, you've got no pressure. You, yeah. you, go, you go and you enjoy it more. But then yeah. when that second season comes in, it's like, oh, wow, we need to try and beat what we've done last year, lads. And it starts to become. And the novelty wears off. Then you've gone to Old Trafford before and you've gone to Anfield and you're like, got well, you. now it's not but enjoyable. Now you need to sort of roll your sleeves up and get points. Got you, got you. Uh, see, for me, when I went up, when I, went up I, was, I felt under pressure, actually, because I didn't go up with Cardiff. I left and went to QPR, who got promoted. Yeah. And yeah. they was all on the high. But because I went to QPR, I felt like I was under pressure to perform and score goals yeah. because I'd done it the previous season. So I went up there with like, you know, there was an expectation, oh, you know, he just scored 20 goals. You know, he's got to do it again kind of thing. Yeah, no pressure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And I, f I felt under pressure personally. But the team, we had a good team spirit until you get beaten that first time. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, all of a sudden, you know, all these kind of mental issues, you know, kind of come into your mind. You know, we could go back down to the championship now. We don't pull our socks up and start, you know, getting results. So that's when, for me, it became more tactical than everyone behind the ball. Yeah. You know, be difficult to beat. But then, for me, being a striker, I'm up, I'm up front by myself. You know, and you know, people, players might knock the ball up to me, and then it's it's difficult for me to impose my game and show my quality because mm, you know yeah, all the teams yeah. behind the ball. Yeah. You know, Sid, you're a midfielder, so you can dictate the game. It's a different aspect. I can see what you're saying there for a striker. Yeah, like I, I couldn't, you know, I have to rely on other people to get me the ball in areas yeah. to score goals where Sid, he could, you know, make smash someone. Happen. Yeah, he yeah. could smash someone. He can make things happen. He can pass the ball. He can dictate his own game. Well, I have to be disciplined and stay up top. Uh, what are the atmosphere is like in the championship? Because I love watching it on TV and it mm. does sound, whatever ground you go to, the atmosphere is incredible, yeah. you know, is it? Well, I think, they, I think the atmosphere is better than in the Premier League because the games are so entertaining and you've always got goals and it's so competitive. Like, the That's games true, yeah. can go either way. Like, listen, you'll have a few games like this, this season, for instance, Fulham have you know, done Team 6-7-7, seven, seven, yeah. they? Or 7-6-6. Seven, six, six. But the majority of games are so competitive. And you know, it's like you go to a game and it could be nil nil after 30 minutes, but it needs a spark. It needs someone yeah, yeah. to go crash into something, to red card into goal. As soon as you get that, <laughs> It, it's yeah, you've got that within five minutes in the championship. Yeah. Like, there might be odd game where it doesn't happen, but more often than not, you've got a goal straight away or someone's, you know, 
someone's having a tear up over there, you know, the manager's <laughs> right. <laughs> <It's laughs> <just, laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's brilliant. It's I, easy to watch. Yeah. I like the stadiums as well in a championship because they're so close. You yeah. know, nowadays you go to the Premier League and, so you know, Man City, they're yeah. far away. Okay. But in the championship, there's small stadiums, and you know, you're close to the fans. Yeah, but that's you know, for, you a can play, hear for, everything. for a player, is that a good thing? I mean, I like when you're playing at home, it's great. Yeah. You know, when you're playing away, it's a bit intimidating. Like yeah. when, when we play against Swansea, like for oh, Cardiff, Swansea, it yeah. was Ooh. like it the derby. That was like an amazing game. It goes under the radar, that yeah, derby. Yeah. You know, we'd go and stay in Swansea and, you know, fans would you know, set the fire alarms off in the hotel. So we didn't get any sleep. We had to come out in our like dressing gowns and stuff. <laughs> you know, and that, was, that, was how, that was how it was. But we played there and I remember it was so like, it's so daunting to go there, but you kind of embrace that, embrace that pressure as a player. You know, you kind of raise your game, but like you said, it's, you know, one tackle and, you know, the fans are up and shouting and screaming. The managers are, you know, arguing. Yeah. I think, you know, that's what you get in the championship. You don't really see in the premiership as much. That's class. Uh, Jay, your favourite goal in the championship. You scored a few. You've got to pick one. Yeah. My goal against QPR. Um, and the reason why I say that is two reasons. Obviously, you know, it's a great goal. But after speaking to them of the QPR players as well, you know, they told me some funny stories about, you know, Neil Warnock saying, whatever you do, don't let Jay shoot with his left foot. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? And then like, after, was about after 15 minutes, I cut inside and whip it in the top corner. <laughs> but also in that, we played them early on in the season and, you know, I didn't get a penalty and it was like one in the last minute. And I, I always felt like playing against QPR was really difficult. You didn't really get much, you know, you didn't get much change out of them. It was difficult to get chances because, you know, they were probably the best team. You know, um, but defensively, they were really good as well. So for me, that was a game that I thought, you know, I want to score in this game. You know, they're going to get promotion. You know, I want to score against a promoted team so I can say, yeah, you know. And that game was a really good game for us. But I think that was probably my most, you know, I was most excited about that goal in the way I went in. Love that. Uh, no point asking you. <laughs> Yeah, there's no point. There's no point. <laughs> Halfway line. That was outrageous. Line. I mean, how many times a day do you watch that still? Uh, I watched it this morning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen it since last night. Uh, that no. was ridiculous, wasn't it? Yeah. And I'm, such a lovely story behind it. Yeah, as well. yeah. The whole the thing was beautiful. Yeah, the whole, that, that whole season with Brighton in that championship, and I experienced very, very similar to Reading when we went up. There's so many similarities in terms of the games that you come back from or a goal might happen, you just go, this, this is just part of this story of this journey to go up. And that one where Bristol City away, Anthony Knockhart's dad passed away, and we said whoever scores the goal, we'll celebrate with the shirt to him. And yeah, I mean it come to me, and I mean I, I, was, I was watching the keeper off his line before and before it come to me. So it wasn't a reaction. Was, no, that was no, yeah. no. So I, I so I do, I do it most games. I've probably done it three or four times where half of them have gone. I'm going to do it at Old Trafford once. No, <laughs> 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 I didn't. It was yeah. like worm burn. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, um, yeah, I, I watch keepers and then I, I just think if it comes to me, because I'm in around the halfway line, all you need to do is have a touch and if you can get a good strike off, you've got a chance. And then that one fell to me and it happened to fall obviously on my left foot and I still went, I went for it because I just knew that he was got off his line. So I thought if I get a good connection and it goes on target, then I've got a chance. When you hit it, did you know? Yeah. As soon as it left your foot? Yeah. Because it's one of them strikes where, like, if you that's him to a goal fight, where it just like just Pure. cleans, yeah. it just cleans off. Yeah. Like it, just, and it was in the air, and then I see the keeper going, and oh, then when right. he went down the trap door as well, <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's, it's in, in. Yeah. It's in. So, and it was brilliant. It I'll, was brilliant. I'll be honest with you. When I see that goal, I was like, City? That's City. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And it's on Sky as well. Yeah, so it's amazing. Just the whole thing about yeah, it. Yeah, it was nice. Down yeah, road, just... and I think the week, did it, was it the week? No, so it was a week after. We actually all went to France and went to his dad's funeral as well. Oh, nice. Touch. Yeah, so it was, um, it was a nice couple of weeks. And again, it was just another part of the jigsaw of that yeah. season. So Amazing. Yeah. Right, that, I love that, I love that. This is now time for the ultimate champions championship quiz. Oof. Boys, you got your things here. Let's get quizzical. You got good, scared, quizzical. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous about this. That, right, so you can't obviously talk to each other about the answers. First one: Which championship ground has the biggest capacity? So, which current championship ground has the biggest capacity? Oh wow, that's a great question, Matt. I locked in. Locked I'm going to do the five questions, and I'm going to go through the answers. answers yeah. Yeah. Get a bit of suspense with it. Right, we good? Yep. 
<clears throat> Which ex-championship manager has managed the most games in English professional football? Jay's on it, look, Bosch. Which ex-championship manager? manager? So he's not managing He's not championship. managing at the moment. He was, he was. He's not managing anymore? Not at the moment. In the championship or at all? He's just not managing at the moment. Okay. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he was recently. He was recently. We good? Yep. Yep. I like this. I'm enjoying it. Which striker holds the record for most championship goals? Of got all that. time on one season. Of, of all got, time. Got that in the bag. Of all time. Got that in the bag. Of all time. Of all championship time. scorer. I'll give you a clue. He's right footed. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'll come back to that. Yeah. Right, here's a good one. Who got booked more in the championship out of you two? Who got, oh. who got booked more? I, probably, probably me, because I used to argue with the referees all the time. <laughs> Is it tight? Yeah, tight enough. You. <laughs> definitely. I'm going to go you. It's definitely you. We good? Yep. Final one. How many current championship clubs have you both played for? So I've got to be clear with this. Ooh. A current championship club. How many have you both played for? You played for that club and then so did you play for that club at a certain time. Right. Answers time. So Jay, what did you have? for the uh, biggest capacity? I went for Cardiff. Okay. I went for Derby. Apparently it's Middlesbrough. Oh, oh my God. God. I tossed up between them. It was a very similar yeah. stadium. Favourite ground to play at in the championship for you boys? My, uh, mine is Leeds. Leeds, Leeds, really yeah. like Leeds, Leeds. Ellen Road. Yeah, Ellen Road bounced. was really nice. Yeah, when that's good. The surface was great as well. Fans are close. And it, it I think it's not a Derby with Cardiff, but there was a, a rivalry there. Yeah. And it was always, you know, you go there and it was always tight games, but you know, the, the atmosphere, like you said, it was, was amazing. Yeah. And to be honest, I think I've scored most of my championship, you know, against one team. Yeah. I think that was the team that I scored a lot of goals against. Yeah, yeah. Same for you, Sid? Uh, no, I've got two. Mm. Um, one would be Ipswich, because back in the day, as it is now, that pitch. Portman Road? Yeah, that's Portman huge. Road. Oh, but the, it is a carpet. Yeah, yeah. You used to like. You knew when you go in there, it was yeah, you know, pair of mould straight off the bat. You know, like the grass. See, this is like the stuff that. I love to hear. I love Portland, yeah. like that. No, was it was great. It was a great. Yeah, the pitch, the pitch was, was great. Amazing. But the pitch. I remember. I used to go there and feel like the pitch is huge. Yeah. It, and it looks it as well when you stand on like this and you look down. It's like, yo, there's gonna be a lot of running today. Yeah, when yeah. your own team, that like, players, the away team gets to a ground and yeah. they all go out. Then they so when they're right, boys, get yourself out. Why would I know like the kit? And Didn't have to there. Yeah, but when you go on the pitch and you go and you walk on there, there'd be some of you like, oh, fuck, wow, look at the bubbles there, look, yeah. puddle there. There, you just walk out and you're like, oh, yeah, like, where are you going? It's going to be nice today. So, there, so that one was very, very, very early day, uh, early doors. Um, and the next one was Millwall Way. You liked it? So I, I, didn't, I, I, didn't, I didn't like Millwall, Millwall at all. Way. I didn't like it. And I, the den, the old den, yeah. I hated that. No, I, I, that's what I was like, let's have yeah. it. I used to love that away from away So you from loved home. all that, you loved going into that sort of there is the no, effect. There is no better feeling than playing away from home and getting three points and getting on the bus after. But when you're there and you're celebrating against all their fans, I used to be like, boys, it's just us for them, all of them today. I don't, like, let's have it. Like, I, used to lo I used to love playing away from home. Love it. Yeah, no, I did. I like playing at, away from home better than at home. For sure. Imagine you scoring. What, what, yeah. Why? That's interesting. Because why? when you, like you said, when you score, you're celebrating in front of all their fans yeah. and kind of rubbing it in their face. They're giving you abuse for 90 minutes and then you go and score a goal. Like we play, we, I didn't score a goal against um, Swansea, but we, we beat Swansea and, and Craig Bellamy scored right at the end and we won. And it was like amazing. You know, we're all celebrating on the pitch. And, you know, even when you get on the coach at the end, you get back on the coach and all the fans are like giving you abuse and you're just like <laughs> sticking your fingers up like, like that, you know, in, in Tyson. It's, it's amazing to play away. I like that as well, yeah. to be honest. Right. Which championship ground has the best and the worst changing room? I remember so vividly because it was a, it was a day that I got called up by England and it was Scunthorpe away. And I remember I went in there and it was freezing cold. The, f the floor was like stone. That was freezing cold. The <laughs> showers, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they, yeah. Oh, they forgot yeah, to pay yeah. their water bills. And the showers afterwards were like barely warm. Yeah. Like it was just awful. But we won the game. 
I scored a couple of goals, but I just remember being there thinking, this is awful. I couldn't, yeah. and I'd hate to play. It's one of them places you just don't look forward to going to at all. That's probably why they do it. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mindset. Yeah. Bradford, Bradford away is horrendous. That, that is, that's tiny. And the stairs that go down. QPR away, the away dressing in QPR is tight. Yeah. Is it tight? <laughs> yes. Like, You're it sitting on top of each other. Like, there, you'd have like, one of the physio beds like hanging half out the toilet and half in the, in the dressing room because you, like, you can't fit everyone in. Everyone's like walking around. One of the even, even the home dressing room. <laughs> the home yeah, dressing room was tight as well. well yeah. yeah, it was really? tight, yeah. Derby away, that was quite spacious. Yeah, I don't really have an... You know, I like Derby, actually. Lovely. Right, let's on to the next one. So it's nil-nil currently. So here we go. Which ex-championship manager has managed the most games in English professional football? <laughs> <laughs> what did you go for? Neil Warnock. Well, Neil Warnock. Neil Warnock. Boom. Yes, yeah. one all. One all. One all. One, one. Uh, which leads me on. Who is your favourite manager in the championship? Favourite manager in the championship? Couple. Steve Couple. Mate, he was brilliant. He was a manager that... He was one of the only managers that... When I come off the pitch on a Saturday and I had a bad game, I'd, I'd, I'd felt like I'd apologise to him. I'd have to, I felt like I'd let him down. It was like a real personal, no one goes out to play badly, no, but yeah. He well, because you had so much respect for him. Yeah. It's kind yeah. of like you run through brick walls yeah, for him. Yeah, like he, he, was, he was brilliant, brilliant. And he was, you know what, he was one of the first ones to do all the analysis, video analysis, and he used to have them at home. So back in the day, they used to wheel out. You know the old fashioned TVs on like, the school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the yeah. stand, they'd yeah. wheel them out and there'd be like wires going out the back and extension link. <laughs> and there'd be like two VHS cause, like, uh, video recorders on top of each other. And he was sort of playing one, pausing it, going, like, flicking the channel, going to the other one. He used to, he used to do it himself as well at home. Wicked. Seriously, on video, on VHS. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Cops was brilliant. Love that. Really good. Jack? Yeah, for me, it was Dave Jones. Dave, Dave Jones, Jones yeah. Cardiff, Dave right? Jones was really good for me personally. Um, because when I went there, first of all, he, he called me when I was on the way to training at Wolves and I, as I was leaving and he says to me, he's like, this is Dave Jones. And I was like, isn't that guy that works on Sky Sports? What are you calling me for? Yeah, uh, and he's like, no. It's the manager of Cardiff, and I was like, "Ah, oh, sorry, sorry." He's like, "Listen, I've got, I've got permission to talk to you," and I was like, "Go on then." And he was like, "Turn your car around and get down to get down to Cardiff, and you know, I want to sign you, kind of thing." And I was like, "So straight away it started off, and that we yeah. was having a laugh." But then he was the kind of manager that was, he says from day one, he says, "Listen, I don't care what you do from Monday to Wednesday, as long as you perform on Saturday." And risky business. Yeah, that. that's what he said. But he said it to all of us, and it's you know it's kind of how you, you then go about it. Mm. You know, for me, I, I think I was pretty professional, as in I wouldn't go out and you know I, I've never been a big drinker or anything like that. So I'll never go on Thursday or Friday because you know Saturday was important for me. But you know, he he always kind of put his arm around me. He got the best out of me. You know, he made me realize how good I could be. You know, and the way he set up training. You know, Terry Burton was there. Yeah. He was at Arsenal. So training was really like, you know, possession based. Before, when I was at other clubs in the championship, it was more like, because I'm tall, it was more like knock it up to the big man, get, big get man. hold of it, you know, or get flick ons for the small man that's playing next to you kind of thing. And, you know, as much as I can do that, I didn't really enjoy doing it. So when I went to Cardiff and he said, listen, we want to play total football. And then he brought all these, you know, there was all players there like yeah. Wits, Steve McPhail, Craig Bellamy come, Aaron some, Ramsey was there for a season. Yeah, yeah. so we had a good group of players, you know, and we all believed in the same thing. And we, we, we did pretty well, you know, we fell at the last hurdle in the playoffs, you know, I got injured, which is you know, the worst day of my career probably. But, you know, we, we had a good team spirit and I think he created that. And I don't think he gets enough credit for what he did at Cardiff, to be honest. Mm. Love that. Right, on to the next one. It's one all. Which striker? Holds the record for the most championship goals. You're not happy with this, you? No, you know. mine's wrong. I, I don't know why. I put Kevin Phillips, but it's not him. It's not Kevin it's not Phillips. Kevin, no. I, this could be a big custard pie because I've been giving it loads. You went yeah. really yeah. quick as well. I'm going. I think it was Ivan Tony. It's not. No, it's not either. You're miles it's not either. Well, he's got 31. No, no. it's all. That's what. That's what I mean. All he said time. all time. That's why he's So what is it of all time then? That's his problem. Yeah. No, no, no. No, yeah. no, no. I thought he said of all time. <laughs> so what's the all time? Collectively. Of all time. Of all time. Yeah. The all time championship. Yeah, ever. Not in one season. Yeah. 
Oh, ever? Yeah. Oh, no. oh, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. What chance you got? Seriously. Oh. Man, Do you yeah. want to guess now? Because no, that's what I thought. Because yeah. Glenn Murray, Glenn Murray yeah. had it. Yeah. No. Then Tony time, had it. Yeah. Most goals ever. I probably would have gone Kevin Phillips as well, if I'm honest. Oh, okay, well, you're both wrong. Yeah. It's uh, Billy Sharp. Oh, Billy geez. Sharp, yeah. yeah. Oh. He's been there. On the time we are filming this podcast, it was broken it was. a few weeks ago. I remember it now. That's disappointing. That's awful. That. Been, cro- been crossed next time. Yeah. talking about Kevin Phillips. That's why as well. I probably would have gone in if I'm honest. Billy Sharp. Yeah. Billy but Sharp. He's been, he, listen, he's had a, a great career in the championship. Yeah, yeah. Great finisher player. as well. What yeah. a player. Yeah. He'd go in my team. In the champ. Again, I'm my ultimate champions team. Yeah. You've got to put Billy Sharp in. Yeah. Just no, I don't know about that. You only win, no? Well, we're going to go. We're going to get your team later. No, but no, no, no. Billy Sharp. Who is your favourite strike partner in the championship? I had Michael Chopper and Ross McCormack that I would play with. Nah, Ross McCormack was quality. Yeah. He, was awesome, he could dribble, yeah. he could shoot with both feet, free kicks, technique, he was strong. But then with Chops, he was just like a predator. With any like any loose ball, any flick on I got, it mm. was like he just knew it was in his path, and he would he was a good finisher as well. To be fair to him, so I think I would go for Chops in the end because that season we done really well. We you know he, he scored a lot of goals and he scored a lot of goals at Cardiff before I came as well. I think he went to Sunderland, yeah. um, but I think you know the relationship we had on the pitch was like a sixth sense in the end. You need good strikers in the channel. Oh, you, yeah. yeah, you yeah. need to, you need to it's have so it. hard to get. Out you need to strike hard to get twenty goals. Yeah, well, when when we yeah. went up with Reading, yeah, we had Kitson, Doyle, Long, and Lita. That was our four. They, they absolutely, ain't bad. They, they, yeah, yeah they yeah. smashed in goals. So, well, and they and every one of them got two up front. at least double figures. Yeah, we went four four two. So it was, it was with the Kitson and it was Leroy. Normally Kitson and uh, Doyle. Yeah, Shane Long was only young he was meant to go out on loan but every time he kept coming on a sub he scoring. kept scoring yeah. so the gaffer was like we'll keep him Leeds was just banging in goals as well but that year that the year we went up with Reading we still got the record now 106 yeah, points yes. and every outfield player scored every outfield player that's it, that's that? it, that's every, it, that's every single outfield it? player scored <laughs> we scored we had 106 goals 100, 106 points 100 goals Jesus Christ that. how many teams have scored 100 goals in the champ? Yeah. Oh, they've uh, a great sure, record. Not, but yeah, can't, yeah think, well, can't be many. Might, sure. yeah. Yeah. No, no, but anyway, yeah, we, was, we, we got promoted in March. March. How many, games do, how many games did you lose from then? None. From March to the end of the season, you, knowing you've been None. promoted? Yeah. That we been lost the first game of the season. Yeah. It was Plymouth at home. They won a 36 game unbeaten run. Over Christmas, we won 10 on the bounce. <laughs> got 30 points on Christmas. Oh, <laughs> Imagine being we on a holiday moved, since, we, since March. March <laughs> when we got promoted in March, <laughs> Gaffer took us to Marbella yeah. for mid-season training. Yeah, of course. Didn't, <laughs> didn't, didn't, even, didn't even kick a ball. Really? And honestly, we was on the razzle for four days, solid, straight. Like The boys were getting in from the night out and instead of just like, <laughs> well, they're getting in from the daytime and then just putting deodorant over their jumper just to get out <laughs> that night. And then we come back and then we beat Derby. Five, we beat them 5-0 at home to win the league. Well, the week we, we got back five nil after the week we got five back days on the absolute on the fight, yeah, on the source, yeah. Did you feel rough playing that game? Uh, no, because you just get you're buzzing, aren't you? Yeah, you're buzzing. Yeah. It's like routine, isn't it? Yeah. If yeah, I used to play Sunday League and I was all over the shop, <laughs> there, was no, there, was, there was no adrenaline pump in there. So, so we so we went so we 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 got promoted in and on that trip. Sheffield United was on that trip as well. They just happened to be out there right. as well in the mid-season uh, break. And we met each other once by chance at one of the bars, beach bars in Port Banu. So we was all just having drinks because they was it was one and two, so they was second. Yeah. And so <laughs> <Promotion they're>, party. <laughs> right, so listen, so listen, right. So we left early, we had a, a night out for a meal. So we've left and the, the bill must have been like horrendous. So we stuck it on there. We stuck it on the table <laughs> bill on there, on their tab. So they had to pick it up. That's all awesome. they had to pick it up, yeah. Did so, you ever find um, out what it was? No, I never found out. No, that would have been, yeah, yeah, been, been a bit. That would have been yeah. big. So yeah, it's it's there. That's, that's it. London prices. Finishing second, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Finish first. You're not first. You're last. Right. So we're still one all. One all. And we're going in. This is big. This one. is this, this is big, big one. one. Who got booked more in the championship out of you two? I've gone for me because I remember getting booked a lot, and I remember cops saying, "I think I got booked 14 times once in a season." That's impressive. Because I think I remember cops going. City, you're gonna fucking get <laughs> some. You're missing too many games. You got, you, got, you got a game ban if you got five, five and then two after two ten. Two game ban if yeah. you got to ten. I remember saying you're missing too many games, City. 
We need you on the pitch, lad. <laughs> you get me no, no. anyway, yeah? I'm going, me. I'm going you as well. You know, back in the day, it was like, leave a bit of an early doors. <laughs> And I right. know that you probably, he would as Don't well. Don't tell me he's, he's physical. <laughs> you what? So you've both gone for Steve Sidwell? Yeah. Yeah. It's Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Called into my, my statistician here. Are you joking? J31, how, U20. How many tackles? 31, 11 more bookings. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't for tackles. <laughs> it wasn't for tackles, it was for mouth. Descent, yeah, probably. Yeah, Jeez, that is surprising. Hold on, hold on. But how long did I play in the championship for compared to you? Don't know. That, that's got a... That, well, that's the yeah. question. Do you know what I mean? That's that's 31. Wow, 31, eh? That's, in, that's 31. interesting. Because you've know, got 14 in one season. Yeah. I mean, that's right. impressive getting 14 in one season. Yeah, it was. I think after that, when, when cops give me that. I think I got 12. Me. I got 12. <laughs> I think I got 12. I think I got 12. I Yeah. <laughs> It leads on to that, like bookings, red cards and stuff like that. Who's the hardest player you both played with in the championship? Who are you not messing with? I said this to you earlier, didn't I? I played with or against? With, well, with and against. No, let's go with. Let's go with. with. On your team. On my team, when I first went to Reading, Phil Parkinson. He used to wear a gun shield. Do you remember Parkinson? The big centre forward? Yeah, no, no, no. no. Centre back. I know if you sent me field up. Sent me field. Manage Bradford, yes, Sunderland. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Parky. Like I was only I went there when I was nineteen, I think, to Reading, coming out of Arsenal, and all of a sudden, I look, like next to me, there's a fella with a gum shield in. I'm like, <laughs> he wore a gum he shield. Wore a gum shield going out to play. <laughs> back then, there was no one wore gum shields. Back then, he had Vaseline on his eyebrows and a gum shield. <laughs> Do you think he was playing rugby? <laughs> <laughs> he used to clatter people as well, and he's one of them as well. I was a youngster at the time. If there was any you know, tackles or flare up, he'd be straight in, grabbing like the youngsters, getting them away, putting the other one like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a parky for me. Yeah. What a hero. Yeah. For me, it's Darren Purse. Darren Purse. Yeah. Darren yeah. Purse. He had he the big, hard, he had the he? biggest calves in the world. Yeah. He, I never ever see him wear moulds. He was no. always wearing studs or long studs. Training he used to smash me all the time. But he was one of he used to, he was one of those players that just set the tone every game. Yeah, yeah. Proper leader, wasn't he? Yeah, proper yeah. leader, yeah. But even, you know, as he got older, even when he wasn't playing, he was great to have around, you know, the training ground. But in training, it would be like, you know, train as you play. And he always did that. You know, and it, as a forward, you, you don't want to get smashed on a Friday before a game. Mm. But for him, he's like, I'm getting you ready for the game. It's, I get that. But like, it's just, sometimes does that not lead to injuries? Like, if, yeah, if you've got some does. like, Lunatic centre back smashing you in training. Have yeah. you seen things flare up in changing? Room? Yeah, like, I mean, I've seen training ground in uh, uh, Cardiff, Always. especially. It, there was like flare ups every week at least, more than one maybe. Yeah. People arguing and you know, fisticuffs and you know all that kind of thing. But that's that's men's football, isn't it? It's testosterone. We're all like, we're all trying to win. Even the five sides, you're all trying to win yeah. the five sides. That's where it all kicked off the five sides yeah. in training. Yeah, because you're so competitive. Yeah, yeah. everyone yeah. was like, me, I remember me and Nicky Shorey, we used to car share, right? <laughs> Driving every day, and we had a 5 0, and he's coming, he's done me, I've got up, and I've gone, what are you doing? He's squared up. So I've just, for some reason, I don't know why, I've just gone bang, put my head straight on his nose, his nose went out, like, he's swung, he's caught me, Jeff was coming, wah, wah. <laughs> so like, just like, again. Yeah, and he's like, well, uh, that was it, stop, everyone stop walking in. Like, he's obviously walking in with a group of lads, I'm walking, I'm like, like before you know it, Kev Dillon, the assistant manager, just dragged us into the office. He's gone, boys, come on, look, what's going on? Before, like, we're shaking hands in the car after training, like, we're car sharing. So we've got to get in the car, <laughs> and then we went to the pub after. Literally stopped off at Booze, I had a lot of pint. I was like, oh, I've seen one of things, got in. That's it, the next day, like, that. nothing ever happened. It was awesome, isn't it? But it's he like sat that, in though. the pub with his nose just like that. Yeah, no, it weren't good. It no. weren't, no, it weren't but it's like that, isn't it? You have a fight or something, and the next day you come in, it's just like, yeah. Your friends you again. Squash it out. Yeah, straight away, yeah. Love that. Yeah. Right, the deciding question. I didn't really get this question, so. Right, so what it was is like, what? how many teams in the championship? Has me and him played for? Yeah, the same team. Yeah. Oh, I okay. don't remember playing in the same I got one. For the same club as it. One. Oh, this is what, you know, that's why it's a good question. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Of. I don't yeah. remember either, but I. F oh, well, I've got none. Okay, you've got none? One. One. Yeah. Jay wins the competition. Stoke. Stoke. Yeah. Yeah, I went on loan to Stoke, yeah. <laughs> I would never have known that. Four games you played for Stoke. Jay Boffwood. And I got his promotion medal. <laughs> 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 no, you did not. <laughs> yeah, I remember, yeah. Yeah, you both played for big, Stoke. Big Tony Pulis. Yeah. So Jay, well done. You win three one.
Thank you. Well done. We can't do a podcast uh, about the new fancy football game from Unagi, Ultimate Champions, without you two picking your combined team. So on current form, we're yeah. filming this end of Jan, early early February. Should, should we write these down? Yeah, yeah we're going to have to. We're going to have to. Put these on the thingy. Uh, personalised board. I need to refer to my notes. This is a current, current, current on form, on form championship team. Yeah. Yeah. The gaffer Remy told us earlier that you can pick as many players from the same team as you yeah. want. Okay, so let's start with a goalkeeper. What formation are you going for first? Uh, That's interesting, yeah. Let's work it out as we go along. Yeah, all right, okay. So keeper. I like Sam Johnston. Yeah, I like him yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, Been in England set up, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. He went to the yeah. I think Rodak could be in there as well because, I mean, he's not had a lot to do this season, but he's been called upon at Fulham. Yeah. He's done well. But I think the majority of the ball for them is down the other end of the pitch. But yeah. John, Sam Johnson, I like. And I, I think he's I, kept, I think he's kept the most clean sheets as well. Right. So I think that, that's important. Obviously. Sam Johnson in between the sticks. Back four, is it? Or back five? What are we? Let's go back four, four. eh? Right So, back. right back. Spence? Yeah, definitely. Jed Spence? I think, yeah. I mean, <laughs> the, la the last yeah. few games he's been amazing. In the I cup, like he's been amazing. Athletic. You know, he, he chipped him with a goal the other night. I like him. I think that. he's... That'd be my right. That'd be. I are, think, we, are we agreeing on that? Yeah, yeah? You're, yeah, you're both the gaffers. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let's just do it. I don't smaller. think we'll see him in championship much longer either. I think he's Jets, that good. Jets, Jets playing yeah. Premier League. Two centre backs. Um, I've got to go to my notes here. I like Dicky for QPR. Yeah. Dicky QPR. Uh, well, my two centre backs would be uh, Lloyd Kelly at Bournemouth and right. Dicky at QPR. And I went. I went Cahill. Gary Cahill. Yeah, Gary Bournemouth. Cahill. I like. I like him. I think he's experienced. He's great from set pieces. And I think, you know, the way Bournemouth play, I think he's really important for the organisation at the back as well. Absolutely. So I, that's why I've gone for him, for sure. Who's your one? Well, I don't know how to pronounce his name correctly. Adorabio. Adorabio. Yeah. Or Hutchinson. Fulham. Yeah. Or Hutchinson at Blackburn. Yeah. Yeah, I like Hutchinson. Yeah. I think he's well, been, so I think he's been good. Idea. I so really respect that you've done your notes as well, that you've come here, that you've actually... Prepared. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah you like have it. to, don't I you? Like this it. is big time. Yeah, this is, this is big time. Well, so why don't we pick one of, one of your two and then one of my <clears> two? So I've right got, because we've got four different centre-halves. Okay. Right, so I'm going to go Dickey. I'll go Cahill. Cahill. Yeah. Right, that's uh, Kate. And we've got a left back. So left I, back. I went for Jay De Silva at Bristol. Bristol City. Yeah, I think he's good. I think he's up and down. He's got good delivery. Athlete, I think he's had a really good season. Yeah, I've gone Jordan Zamora, Zamora, at Bournemouth. Yeah, left back. Again, young, energetic, gets up and down. Scotty's been impressive in this year. Yeah. So that's up to you, boys. Where do you want to go? Go with Jordan. Right. <laughs> I believe Scott. I, I believe like Scotty. The chemistry of the manager. Yeah, I, be, yeah. I believe Scotty. Yeah. yeah. I like him as well. Do you think Bournemouth? I think, Bournemouth he's, I think he's been a great manager. Bournemouth going up. Uh, it's going to be tight. No, I think so I think they, I think they got a, I think they got enough. Yeah. I think they've got enough. That is going to More be than enough, actually. All right, so we've got the back four and the keeper. So are we going to go 4-4-2 four, four, or are we going... What have you got there? Four, two. You got 4-4-2? Four, four, no, 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 I was going to rearrange them. Okay. I like this. I've got 4-2-3-1. I've got like yeah, so... So, so what let's, do you think? Do you want to go... Do you wanna, well, we know our one up top, don't we? Yeah, we know so that. So should yeah. we go up top, yeah? Yeah, let's just do that one. So let's, let's go Mitro, yeah? That's a guarantee, yeah. Oh, Mitrovic. Mitrovic. 100%. Absolute powerhouse. Well, what I like about him as well, like... He, he kind of he bullies the championship. He's a good, great finisher, but he bullies the championship as well. He's aggressive, yeah. you know, like that kind of know, almost Diego Costa kind of way about him. He I like that. Very similar to Diego. Yeah, Costa, I like I like that you about him. You want to play against him? He is surely yeah, got you to know, get the record, no? He's got at the moment, yeah, unless he gets injured. Yeah, so anyway, Mitrovic up top, yeah, yeah alongside got, Billy Sharp. We actually haven't got Billy Sharp. Yeah, either. we haven't, have we? No, controversial. I've got. I've just gone for one up front. Yeah, we can. Come one up front, yeah? yeah? Yeah, I've gone one up front. Play it up to the big man. Let's go midfielders, shall we? Def so sit in midfielders, right? Yep. Okay, I've gone for um, Philip Billing. Yeah, what a player. Billing. I think he's... I thought he would have left. Yeah, I thought so down. as well. He's like, he's, a, he's six foot, what, four? Six yeah. foot three, six he's foot four. Unit. He unit. gets up and down. He chips him with a few goals. But I think in the championship, you need someone like that because he's got everything in his game, as in set pieces, physicality. You know, he, he, he chips in with a few goals. Okay. He's there. So you want to go Billing, yeah? Do you agree? Yeah, no, I like yeah? it. You like yeah. it? Yeah. yeah. Is he, how, what, you, uh, what formation are you playing in? I'm playing two. Two sitters? Yeah. Two sitters? Yeah. He can get forward though. I was just giving him a shout from the side. I'm surprised you're playing with two sitters. 
I thought you'd want people bumming on getting across, is it? No, my fullback, my fullbacks, and you know, my, my free, yeah, yeah. My, you know, he just needs to sit in there and cover with the two, the two centre arse. Love it. I like Willock for QPR. Yeah. And Rothwell for Blackburn. Very good players. I've got to be honest, I don't know a lot about Rothwell. No, yeah, Rothwell, very good. Willock. Yeah. Class. I mentioned Swift as well. I mentioned Swift. Swift gets goals and assists, yeah. but and he's struggling in the Reading team this year. But I wouldn't put him ahead of them two. If, so, this, is, if this is on current form, obviously, but obviously Bradley, really, Bradley Dak would be in there, wouldn't he? If he, he'd be up there. If he was, obviously yes. yeah, really yeah. thick as what player. So let's okay, go. Willock go. is more your attacking midfielder. So let's go Rothwell there. Billion and Rothwell, yeah. For these are two, three more players. I think. I think. Now. I think we're going to agree on. We're definitely agreeing on one. Robertson. Wilson. Oh, Wilson, yeah. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Harry Wilson. Yeah, for me, he's, just, yeah, he's quality. So let's go. He started his career at Liverpool, didn't he, Harry yeah. Wilson? Yeah. I, I really like him. I think Harry Wilson on one side. He's a really lovely bloke as well. Yeah, Harry absolute quality. Isn't yeah, who are you going on the other side? Uh, well, you've got to go Brereton, huh, for Blackburn. He plays off the left. Oh, mate, he's been on flames. Mate, there's no one. Who are you, okay. who are you challenging for that? <laughs> okay. Oh, show, me your name. No, no, show me your name. Oh. I want to put Fabio Cavallo in there. Oh. Yeah. So I reckon he'll be a toss up. Because so he, no, yeah. he's more, he could play in behind. He can play as a number 10, but I've, I put him on the left. Oh, was, yeah. I mean, for me, I've seen him play a few times, and to me, he looks like Premier League quality. Well, Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, probably. And the, the other night against Man City, uh, he got on the score sheet. He didn't look okay, out of place okay, at you all. Can't, you cannot have a team, a current championship team, not have Brereton in there. You can't. Okay, so where are we going then? So we're going to put Cavalli yeah, in, the play, no, we'll put he, in the middle then? Put him in the middle and put yeah, Brereton. That's what I'm saying, he plays off okay, the then, Okay then, okay yeah. then. All right then, I'm happy with that. So yeah. my one in the middle would be Willock at QPR. But I'll I, go with yours. Yeah, I, 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 I have to go with him. Willock's been unbelievable, by the way, this no, year. No, but I'm, not, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I think that if I look at the way they play, to my eye, he looks like a Premiership player already. Yeah, no, I agree with this. Well, I'm happy with that. Jurgen Klopp's been after him. You know, yeah, it's that. but if you if you look at him, you know, he's so young. It looks like he could fit into Klopp's team or Guardiola's team. Yeah, like that kind of ilk. You know, like Foden. Yeah, yeah. Like he he looks like he has that kind of quality. Right. Final question. Team name. Uh, Sid Boff United. Sid Boff United. <laughs> 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 Right, that is one hell of a team. That is ultimate champions, Sid Boff United. Yeah. Look at that. Unbelievable. Hold up, hold up. There's only one thing wrong with that. I think we need to call it Sid Boff City. <laughs> <laughs> Sid, Sid Boff, Boff City. City. It rolls off your tongue better. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> that is Sid Boff City. We're going to win it. Uh, the two gaffers here are going to win it. Uh, please get involved with ultimate champions um, before we leave you from the first episode of the Ultimate Champions podcast. We've got a little surprise, apparently, from the gaffer. Remy, in you come. Ooh. Ooh, what you got here? Ooh. 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 This is here. nice. Look at this. Wow. What's your rating? No, I'm joking. <laughs> 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 I know, I was like, I mean, I mean thanks very much for looking at the photo of me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. You look, you look hot. <laughs> look at that. You look like you're hungover. Yeah, I probably was. That's the problem. <laughs> no, that tells a story. Look, you're you're the defender. You're like you're sweating your nuts off. I'm like yeah, yeah, Mulvey. Jay, Jay scored. He's doing that to the crowd. I'm going. Jay, get me back in. Get back in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going. What time's the pub open? <laughs> Jesus. Thank you so much, mate. Thank you. Brilliant. Great oh, idea. Thank you, game, mate. Thank, thank you so so much. Get involved. Amazing. Look at that.